I think it is quite hard to overstate the impact that Friday's budget will have on poverty, inequality and the financial stress that millions of people are going to be uh, living under. Uh, obviously, much of the immediate attention uh, after the Chancellor spoke on Friday was on the, the distributional impact of some of these policies themselves. And you know, my view, uh, I think, is well known. Uh, I think there uh, is... It was very difficult, I think, to defend uh, the policies in those terms. You know, the statistics are, are well known by now. The vast bulk of the, the added borrowing that is funding tax cuts is going to the very, very richest in society. I think 45% uh, or thereabouts of the value of those tax cuts will go to the top 5% of income earners in, in the country, as the IFS set out only uh, those over £155,000 will benefit at all. Everybody else below that uh, income threshold will lose. So that, in terms of our analysis, uh, will obviously make those at the very top of the income wealth uh, spectrum uh, even richer uh, and wealthier. But because that raises effectively the relative poverty line, it, it puts more people into relative poverty. So that is a matter of concern. Um, but I think since Friday, we are beginning to, re not beginning, we are uh, very starkly realising now that the wider impacts of the budget are likely to be much greater than those immediate impacts. So obviously since Friday, we've seen the collapse in uh, the, the pound that will fuel inflation, which will make the cost of living crisis worse. We're already seeing the cost of borrowing, uh, increasing cost of borrow government borrowing increasing, uh, but there is now, I think, uh, the inevitability of a sharp rise in interest rates, which is going to have a very profound impact on uh, those with mortgages, those with credit card debt, and that will push more people into very serious uh, financial stress. But in the wider sense, the UK, as we speak right now, is in the midst of an unfolding and rapidly deteriorating economic and financial crisis, and it's going to be ordinary people uh, that pay the price of that. Um, I don't think we've had a more serious uh, economic situation, uh, possibly even including 2008, which was a, a global financial crash, but in the UK, probably not a more serious situation in uh, our uh, memories. So... Uh, that has a big impact and therefore, to come back to your question, our analysis has to continue as this situation unfolds. Um, second part of your question, briefly, we continue to discuss with local government partners and with the third sector. Uh, so obviously, uh, we have already taken some decisions that were set out in the programme for government uh, to uh, increase support for advice agencies, giving help to people on the front line. Uh, we have set out uh, work around uh, rent levels and uh, we will continue to do everything we can to support local government. We've uh, most recently had uh, discussions with COSLA to try to give uh, decent pay rises to those uh, working in local government. Uh, lastly, in terms of flexibilities, I think everything we're seeing right now tells us that we need far greater economic and financial levers at our disposal so that we're not at the mercy of decisions taken elsewhere and we can have the full suite of powers and levers that other governments have to try not just to stabilise the kind of crisis that has been created right now but to build the kind of economy uh, and an economy based on equality and well-being that I think there is a majority in this parliament that wants to see. Rightly uh, and properly, regularly, the topic of questioning and debate in this parliament the government I lead is absolutely rightly responsible for the performance of NHS Scotland, and, and I don't shy away from that. But the issues that we're grappling with in the NHS in Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, uh, they're not just about you know, how you manage the system. They are fundamentally uh, about the need for a massive injection of both money and people to deal with the rising demand, to deal with the effects of, of COVID. And... You know, we have a fixed budget within which it is very difficult to respond uh, to that in the way that we would want to, which is why we are relying on the UK government uh, not going down the austerity spending cuts route, uh, but looking at the, the prospects over the next period. I don't think anybody uh, can be anything other than very deeply and very profoundly concerned at what might lie ahead.